What's up, co-reporters? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for another recap of uh, 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort. I don't know if I mentioned this in my initial recap, but I gotta say the titling was absolutely chef's kiss perfectly done, right? I love the double entendre there. So let's start off with Kalani and Asuelo as usual. So Asuelo is back in the bedroom with Kalani that he's not allowed to sleep in, and he's asking her if she has feelings for this new guy that she hooked up with when he gave her the the hall pass and um she of course does she is a bit reluctant to admit it but she ultimately does and he's upset at her and this is where i'm kind of like kalani first of all like i was like team you go ahead like use that hall pass swipe it down to the ground <laughs> um but now when he's like telling her that he's upset that she is still talking to this guy and she doesn't understand it. I'm like, girl, are you okay? Like, obviously he would be upset. It was a one-time thing. You don't get to keep talking to your affair partner, right? And um, I guess like to her, because she was into that whole like virgin before marriage stuff, she 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 feels like if you have, if you sleep with someone, you're supposed to keep like some kind of like emotional connection to them or whatever, which I hope the guy is at least healthy for her. You know what I mean? Cause I feel like there are guys who could take advantage of that to keep using you for like intercourse. You know what I mean? So I, I don't love this for her, but I do understand her naivete because she comes from a very kind of like, uh, like hardcore religious background there. Now, um, Aswelu thinks that Kalani using the hall pass that he gave to her to use is worse than him cheating in the first place because like she felt for the guy, not only that, but because the guy can get her pregnant, which is so funny to me because it's as if Aswilu can't get like the girls pregnant that he cheats on Kalani with, you know what I mean? Like it was just, come on now, you know? And so he tries to guilt trip her about like, really being into like that guy that she had her hall pass with. He's like, I left Samoa for you my whole life. And it's like, okay, well, congratulations. No one told you to cheat on her. Like, why did you leave Samoa to get with her just to cheat on her then? Why don't you explain that instead of trying to make her look like she is the bad guy? You started this whole thing. So at this point, Kalani is tired of talking. She wants to go to bed. And I got to say, you guys, I didn't like the way she was clapping in his face. She's like, I'm done here. You can go. And I'm like, girl, that's a bit aggressive. I really don't like that. I, I don't like when people do that. I feel like it's very disrespectful. It, it gets me in a fighting mood. I never fought in my life, but maybe if someone clapped in my face, I'd be like, mm, I'm ready to give you the old one too, but be careful for my nose. <laughs> I don't know, but I really don't like that. You know what I mean? So I felt like that was kind of like ick to me. Now, um, Angela and Molly, they get together at the pool and I really like the two of them like, um, together. I think that they're very funny. Angela, I don't like the way she treats Michael. I think she's very aggressive with him and it's kind of like scary at times. I remember watching their season. I think she got physical with him even. Uh, Molly, I find her to be a funny, lovely, warm person who got screwed over with that young guy that she was with uh, before. And together, they are just like soul sisters. And it's great that they live like in the same state, like a couple hours from each other, but nothing unmanageable. So I do hope that they maintain a relationship outside of the show. In fact, I would even like to see them have some kind of a spinoff together, like trying to like get with these like much younger guys. You know what I mean? Now, um, they do ultimately convince each other to try to make their relationships work during this retreat because... Angela came in with the divorce papers talking about, Michael, if you don't get it together, I am divorcing you as soon as this is done. And then Molly, she didn't even want to sit next to her guy, Kelly, when they first arrived, right? So they're like, okay, girl, we're going to hold each other accountable, which I thought was like, you know, awesome for the two of them. Now, Big Ed, oh, this guy, I don't know how he gets women. I, I know how he gets foreign women who live in poor countries, but like the fact that he pulled a young American woman who's like decent looking, I'm like, there's got to be something going on with her upstairs because yeah. So they do the couples like challenge where they have to like communicate through blindfold to complete some sort of an obstacle course. Everybody thought Jovi and Yara would win because they are the fittest couple of the bunch. I mean, look at them. Um, Angela obviously could not compete with Michael. So she had to use one of the partners as like her partner as well. So one of the guys would have to do this thing twice. And so she chose Jovi, of course, right? Because he is in the best physical shape. I guess this really triggered Ed because he decided at this point that he was going to go ahead and cheat 
on this obstacle course. So he starts doing it um, as he's seeing like under the blindfold or whatever. And so, you know, I think Liz was the first person to call him out. She's like, dude, you're not even paying attention when I try to guide you on where to go. And it's like, you already know where these things are. So what's the point of me even being here? And I love that she's, you know, she called him out on it. She wasn't trying to be polite or safe face for him and his giant ego, you know? So good for her on that front. And then Jovi calls him out. Kelly calls him out. Like people didn't understand why he felt the need to cheat on this because it's not like you, you know what I mean? Like, even if you do win a prize, it's not something like you just don't cheat, like go compete honestly, like everybody else. It just ruins the whole thing, you know? Um, and so at the end, well, they all kind of gather together with the like coaches of relationships and psychology. They tell them that this wasn't even a competition to see who would come like first, second or third or whatever. This is about like seeing how well um, you guys communicate with one another. And so ultimately, you know, which couple wound up winning? It wasn't even a couple. It was Angela and Jovi, right? And, you know, that didn't surprise me because I think that like typically like you bicker less with people that you barely know, right? Like a lot less than you're like less comfortable. You're more polite and this and that. So it didn't surprise me that the two of them together wound up winning. She did a great job guiding him. He was like, but he already like went through it as someone guiding Yara. So now it was up to him to do it on his own. So like he already had like that double practice with it as well. So that was great. Now, um, speaking of Yara, you know, I keep saying this every time, but she is so fly. I love everything about like her style and everything. Please don't tell me she's problematic. It's going to upset me. Um, so here they are sitting around together after completing the challenge. And she decides that she wants to tell Jovi something. And you know what it is that she's been hiding from him? That she is on birth control. And so it was treated like it was this big scandalous thing. And I'm like, I don't get it. She has been telling this man very clearly since having her first baby that she's not ready to have a second one. So it makes sense to me that she would be on birth control, right? Especially when you think about the fact that Jovi keeps pressuring her and trying to push her into a second kid. He's just always trying to like sleep with her and stuff. Like he's just hypersexual in my opinion. Um, so I could see why she would be nervous about it and want to take her reproductive, um, uh, whatever, her fertility in her own hands. So I was like, good for you. But the way he acted, like she should have told him he can't believe she went behind his back. I'm like, boy, shut that F up. It is none of your business. She's told you she's not having another baby. So for now, so why shouldn't she be on birth control? Let her manage it herself rather than have to worry about you and this and that and like your intentions and whatnot. I'm team Yara on that. And I'm glad that Kalani supported her publicly as well because, you know, guys like Jovi can F off in those situations because I would get it if she were trying to convince him that she wanted another baby, but she was lying about it and secretly on birth control. Then he started freaking out about whether or not he's shooting blanks, but she has been 1000% honest with him from the very beginning. So it's really not his business whether or not she's on birth control. When she tells you she's ready, she'll get off the birth control and then you guys can start trying for a kid. Otherwise, what, you know, what, what business of yours is it? You know what I mean? Team Yara. Now, um, here's where something got a little bit weird. You know, I mentioned Kalani in that situation. I love that she supported Yara, but I was floored, you know. I support women's rights and women's wrongs, but Kalani sometimes, she really is trying me, right? So we find out as they're talking to the ex horse that Kalani is still talking to that guy that she's been sleeping with here in the retreat. Like they're here to save their marriage and homegirl is still talking to that man. I was like, girl, are you kidding me? That is absolutely wild. What the F, you know, but like I said, I support women's wrongs. <laughs> I'm just joking. But seriously, like that was crazy. So she does ultimately offer to block his number, I guess, during the retreat. And Aswilu is very emotional. And of course, he accepts it, you know, because to him, it shows him that she's actually in it to fight for this marriage and move forward as a couple. <sighs> you guys, I hate that I even have to think about this because I just ate. By the way, I went to the store and I got truffle mayonnaise. So now when I put like my turkey and cheese sandwiches together, um, I put like that truffle mayonnaise on it and I just love truffle sauce. And so just the idea that this image, this mental image is going to ruin my beautiful meal that I just ate. It's really devastating. And you guys, if you watch the episode, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's Big Ed hopping into that public hot tub naked with his butt cheeks 
and his balls and his schlong touching everything. Like he's just so nasty to me. Like everything about him is so gross. You know what I mean? Like, ugh. Um, I know he gets a lot of extra heat, like based on things out of his control. So I try to be like really soft, but honestly, like he's just such a weird, inconsiderate, like just nasty person. I don't like people like him, to be honest with you. And so like, you've got Angela who comes by when she's, he's in the hot tub with Liz and then he just gets up and flashes her his peen. And I'm like, ew, I really would not appreciate that. I consider that to be actual harassment. But I guess Angela was into it because she flashes him her titties. So I was like, I mean, all right, I guess. And then Molly and Kelly come over and they all get in the tub. And so he has to put his clothes on. I'm like, how gross that he had his like whole everything, like even his butthole, like on that thing. And they're all just sitting there and you see them scooching around. And you know, sometimes you have to put your hand down somewhere to help you as you scooch around like this. Like, just imagine you put your hand down and it's where his like nether regions have been, you know, like it's just so inconsiderate. I don't like it. Um, Kelly, I just love his disdain for um, Ed. He's like, oh, my God, like really now finding out that he was naked in here and now we're all in here. Like, it's just disgusting, you know, and it's true. Angela, by the way, she spills tea and I'm not even sure if it's tea because I'm pretty sure we all could have guessed that. Ed had a small pee pee. He doesn't have a dick. He has a willy, you know, uh, a wee willy. So she's like, wow, like Michael's is way bigger than that. I know a doctor. We can help you up with, uh, we can help you with an extension. Like she dragged that poor man. I wonder if he reject, um, regretted showing off his little Vienna sausage or something because she really went in, you know? Um, so that really kind of cracked me up. He seemed fine with it, by the way. And um, so at the end, like I told you, Kelly could not stand Ed and Ed could not stand to not be the center of attention. So he just keeps inserting himself into people's conversations until Kelly finally calls him out on it. And I was like, yes, drag him. And so Ed's like, you think I'm scared of you? You think I'm scared of you? I'm this, that, that, that. It's like, please, Ed, like, please, please. All someone has to like do is go, eh, you know, on your forehead and you're done. You're, you're done here. You know what I mean? Cause he's so like little compared to everyone else. Like, stop. I don't know. Like his personality is weird. Has he been diagnosed with anything? Because I would be curious to know what it is because oof, that man is a mess. I don't know how Rose did it, but like, I'm glad it worked out for her because now she's making a lot of money on YouTube and like beauty endorsements and stuff. She got her teeth fixed. She's living well in the Philippines. Like, you know, with Money goes a long way in the Philippines, so she's probably living like a princess. Um, I don't know how Liz does it. I don't know what's wrong with her. Is there anything with her too as well that I should know about? Um, either way, oof, oof, oof. Guys, what did you think about the episode? Do you think that Kalani is really going to cut off contact with her lover? Because I'll tell you this. I don't believe it. I think she's still going to be talking to him. She just wants Osweiler to feel good and get off her back so she could send her nudes to her man in peace. <laughs> but I digress. Let me know what you thought about the episode in the comment section down below. And as usual, we'll chat. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.